the region between Thunder Bay, Ontario and Pincher Creek, Alberta is pretty flat. This ski resort density reflects this topographical observation. While there are a handful of ski areas in eastern Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, most of these hills are relatively small, tucked away in river valleys. Of course, there are some exceptions, the most notable one being Mount Agassiz, Manitoba's most prominent ski resort through the latter half of the 1900s. Located in Riding Mountain National Park, this ski resort has a rich history that spans 40 years until it sputtered to a stop in 2000. This video will take you through the history of Mount Agassiz, its founding, the golden years, and the final days for the ski resort. So, without further ado, let's get started. Mount Agassiz Ski Resort was once a popular winter destination in Manitoba, attracting ski enthusiasts from all over the province and beyond. The ski resort, located 8 miles west of McCreary, was developed by a dedicated group of skiers who sought to provide the area with downhill skiing. Mount Agassiz Ski Resort's early years were marked with steady growth and development as it sought to establish itself as a premier ski destination in Manitoba. The ski resort's first major milestone was the installation of a T-bar and a rope tow, which were expected to be operational by December of 1964. The T-bar lift had a capacity of 960 skiers per hour and took 8 minutes to bring skiers to the top. The new chalet, which replaced the temporary accommodations, consisted of a lounge, a canteen, and a pro shop for ski rentals. The ski resort's only drawback of the time was the absence of a snowmaking system, which made it dependent on natural snowfall. Despite these setbacks, Mount Agassiz Ski Resort continued to gain popularity in the 60s and 70s as it attracted skiers from all over Manitoba and other parts of Canada. The ski resort's northern exposure made it ideal for skiing as it provided a natural setting for the sport. In 1970, the federal government paved the road to the ski hill, improving access and making it easier for skiers to reach the ski resort. Mount Agassiz also purchased a tire call grooming machine in 1972 which enhanced the quality of the mountain, making it easier for skiers to navigate the slopes. Attendance records were broken in 1972, and the ski resort responded by purchasing and installing a second T-bar, which ran parallel to the existing lift, thereby doubling uphill capacity of the mountain. The ski resort also developed a strong ski culture, with several hardcore skiers arriving a few hours before the lifts opened, hiking to the top, and skiing down to get first tracks. In 1973, the resort installed a snowmaking system that covered most of the main trails, allowing the resort to stay open more reliably. In the late 1970s, the city of Brandon, Manitoba proposed to host the 1978 Canada Winter Games. As part of this proposal, a man-made ski hill was proposed to be constructed, allowing the Winter Games to take place. Instead of this proposal going forward, the government evaluated Mount Agassiz and Minidosa Ski Valley as potential sites for the Games. Ultimately, Mount Agassiz won the contract to host the 1978 Canada Winter Games. As part of this contract, the ski hill was allowed to nearly double its terrain with five new intermediate and expert runs, as well as a new Skyway double chairlift. Along with this, a new base lodge was constructed for the Winter Games. Snow's here. The adventure of downhill skiing is yours right now at beautiful Mount Agassiz. Featuring the highest vertical runs in the province, beginner and intermediate runs, and all of the resort features you'll need. Rental shop, T-bars, chairlifts, ski patrol, special student programs and group rates. The warmth and relaxation of Agassiz's own cafeteria and lounge. Mount Agassiz, the place to be this winter, just 160 miles northwest of Winnipeg in Riding Mountain National Park. Despite its success in the early decades, Mount Agassiz Ski Resort struggled to survive in the 1980s and 1990s, leading to its eventual closure in 2000. One of the major factors contributing to the ski resort's decline was the changing landscape of the ski industry in Canada. The emergence of larger resorts, such as Assisipi, made it increasingly difficult for Mount Agassiz to compete. Assisipi boasted a modern lift fleet, full snowmaking, and modern skier amenities. Unfortunately, these amenities were simply beyond the budget of Mount Agassiz. Another challenge faced by the resort was the unpredictable weather patterns in Manitoba, which made it difficult to maintain consistent skier conditions. While the ski resort had a snowmaking system, it still struggled in years where snowfall was low. 
This led to a decrease in skier visits and a decrease in revenue, which made it increasingly difficult for the ski resort to remain financially viable. In the end, Mount Agassiz Ski Resort closed its doors in 2000 after more than 40 years in operation. The ski resort's closure was a sad moment for many skiers in Manitoba who had grown up skiing on the mountain and had fond memories of the ski resort. After the closure of the ski resort, there were several attempts to revive Mount Agassiz as a winter destination. In 2012, a proposal was made to reopen the ski area and Parks Canada conducted a feasibility study to assess the potential for its revival. However, the study found that the cost of repairing and upgrading the ski resort's infrastructure was prohibitive, and the proposal was ultimately rejected. In 2015, after several years of consideration and consultation, Parks Canada decided to remove the ski lifts, lodges, and facilities from Mount Agassiz and allow the area to return to its natural state. Now, let's talk about the topography of Mount Agassiz. We're going to start off with Mount Agassiz East, which was serviced by two parallel T-bars rising over a kilometer in length with a 147 meter vertical drop. As we can see, Mount Agassiz East was more geared towards intermediate skiers and expert skiers. For intermediate skiers, there's quite a few options including West Bull Run and Whiskey Jack. This black run right here, Spruce Bull, also provided the expert skier with a bit more options. It's important to note that this area was flat, which was why this rope toe was here, providing skiers an egress out via the snowboat run. There was a mid and load station on both T-bars right here, which provided the only true beginner run on Mount Agassiz East. If we go over here, we can see these two runs, Raven's Flight Black and East Run. These two runs appeared on original trail maps, on later trail maps, this blue run appeared, however it was unnamed so we're not sure what it was called. There is also a beginner rope tow here, serviced by a green run. We can see the lodge over here and the old ski patrol building, as well as several maintenance shacks. If we go over here, we can also make out the former parking lot. Now let's go to Mount Agassiz West, serviced by a Skyway double chair. Mount Agassiz West has a more steep lift line near the bottom and more mellow near the top. The double chair is 878 meters long and features a 141 meter vertical drop similar to Mount Agassiz East. This run right here, Cat Track, gives the beginner skier an easy way down the mountain until you hit the lower part of the chair. Same with the Birches and Big Eddy. I'm not sure if there was originally a way for, to get from the green to the bottom of the chair, but I imagine there was, it's just not on the trail maps. There's also big expansion possibilities in here in the 1980s with original development maps showing the ski hill continuing along this ridge. In conclusion, Mount Agassiz Ski Resort was once a popular winter destination in Manitoba, attracting skiers from all over the province and beyond. The ski resort's successes in the 1960s and 1970s were due to its ideal location, natural setting, and dedicated staff who worked hard to create a world-class ski destination. However, changing industry trends, unpredictable weather patterns, and a remote location all contributed to the ski resort's decline in the 80s and 90s, eventually leading to its closure in 2000. While the ski resort may be gone, it will always be remembered as a beloved part of Manitoba skiing history, and its legacy still lives on by those who experience the mountain. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. And until next time, this is Skier72.